In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to reset all the valves back to zero. This video is going to be especially important if you say screw with your camshaft if you put a new one in you do any adjustments if you start tweaking with your valves and you think you've accidentally screwed something up if the engine's not starting or anything uh, if you mess with your timing chain this is essentially what you have to do you don't have to take the engine out but you are going to have to strip the intake off you're going to have to take the valve covers off so that you can actually see what you're doing now unlike a previous video that i've done what you're going to want to do is loosen all of your rocker nuts so that you do have that play going back and forth with all of your push rods. I'm using an 11 16 socket for that. So the whole reason I'm going through this process is because my starter was having a difficult time trying to turn the engine over. So I figured I'd pop the valve covers off and start tampering with the rocker arms and loosen some of the spring pressure and make it a little bit easier for the starter to turn the engine over. Well, then I quickly started to realize that I was making a big mistake. Unfortunately, I made too much of a mistake and the damage has been done. So now I've got to reset the whole thing. So, I don't want to risk using the starter to try to turn the engine over so that I can adjust the valve lash. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a three quarter inch socket on the end of my crankshaft and I'm going to try to turn this thing over by hand. Now to turn that over you're not going to want to use just a regular socket wrench because it has these little gears in it and if you put too much torque on it you can break your socket wrench. So what you're going to want to use is a solid steel breaker bar. Now, if for any reason you can't turn this over by hand, then you have a problem inside your engine and you need to address that issue before you continue doing this. Fortunately though, looking at my camshaft, my number one intake valve is right at the peak of valve lift. So what we're trying to do now is the camshaft has what's called lobes on it. These are little teardrop shaped or egg shaped little protrusions sticking out of the camshaft. That's what pushes your push rod up and down. What we're going to do with our number one intake valve, this is what I'm going to be doing to start. Number one intake valve is now at full lift. So the lobe on my camshaft is at full valve lift. That's when the tip of that teardrop shape is pointed up into the push rod. That is on my number one intake. And when you've got your number one intake at full valve lift, what you wanna do, you don't wanna adjust the number one, you wanna adjust the number six. So with the number one cylinder, the intake, that's the shorter one, at full valve lift, we're gonna come over to our number six cylinder intake because it's going to be on the heel it's going to be completely closed. That is when you want to adjust this, when you want to tighten it down. You want to make sure that you take out all of that play back and forth, all that up and down movement of your push rod. When that's done, you want to go one half turn following the block, just like I showed you in my previous video. Just so that you know which cylinder is which, what's exhaust, what's intake, we'll go over this again. The driver's side of the vehicle with the steering wheel. Driver's side of the vehicle. This is the number one exhaust, number one intake. Number three exhaust, number three intake. Number five exhaust, number five intake. Number seven exhaust, number seven intake. Now we come over to the passenger side of the vehicle. Front of the engine over here, back of the engine over there. This is the number two intake. Number two exhaust. Number four intake, four exhaust. Six intake, six exhaust. Eight intake, eight exhaust. Again, for the first cylinder, make sure you turn the crankshaft, which will in turn turn the timing chain and turn your camshaft, because you want that camshaft to be turned so that that lobe is at full valve lift for the number one cylinder. When you have that full valve lift on the number one intake valve, you're going to adjust the number six intake valve. You're going to torque it down, make sure there's no play with that push rod. Then you give it that one half turn 
finish it off. When you're done with that one, you're going to turn the crankshaft again, which again will turn the camshaft. Turn the camshaft so that you have full valve lift on the number 8 cylinder. The intake valve of the number 8 cylinder. Then you're going to adjust the number 5 intake valve. Follow this procedure and everything should work out just fine. When you're all done adjusting all of the intake valves, we're going to move on to the exhaust valves. Again, following the firing order, with the number one cylinder exhaust valve at full valve lift, you're going to adjust the number six exhaust valve. Repeat this process until you've done all the cylinders. <laughs> 